this channel is mostly about ideas and institutions and how they affect people like you and me. In some of the earliest videos on this channel, I explain the differences, at least how I see them, between left and right. There's a link to someone else's video in the description which explains terms like the right, conservatives, and the alt-right. Uh, you might want to check those out so you have some idea what I mean by the terms, but the most succinct I can be is the left cares about equality and the right opposes equality. You'll see what I mean if you don't already. You could certainly include liberals and political parties like the Democratic Party or the UK Labour Party as being on the right because they're capitalist parties working for a capitalist system. I certainly wouldn't call them left-wing. If they were left-wing, there would be no homelessness or student debt or trillion-dollar military budgets. Liberals are a problem, too maybe just as big as the right. In fact, I think I would be remiss if I didn't say, for all their fighting, they depend on and prop up each other, and are basically the other wing of the same bird. Like a shithawk. Like a shithawk. But most of my videos are directed at their beliefs already, so I'm not talking about them today. I'm talking about people whose beliefs clearly situate them on the political right, by common definitions. Conservatives in the alt-right are on the right, and have ever more disturbingly overlapping beliefs, but they are distinct groups. I'm talking about right-wing Americans, but they share some beliefs with other conservative and reactionary groups around the world. I'm using labels, but labels can be misleading. However you describe yourself, if you share beliefs with the people I'm describing, you might want to ask yourself why. I'm going to be using the word propaganda a lot, and again, I've made a video you should probably watch on that topic, because I might not mean the same as you mean. For example, if you use the term left-wing propaganda, we're talking about different things. Propaganda is not some words or slogans or any lie someone else is trying to get you to believe. Propaganda means the messages presented as facts that come out of the institutions of power, like the state, the media, the corporation, the school, the university, and the church, which form the dominant ways of thinking. If you don't learn to see propaganda for what it is, you don't learn to question it, and it simply remains reality. The reason I'll be using the term a lot on this series on the right wing is we live in a system whose propaganda supports capitalism, police, military, borders, the law, white supremacy, patriarchy, and other intersecting tools of institutional violence. And the right tends to accept it all as self-evident and self-justifying. They encourage this violence, whether they know it or not. I don't mean to paint everyone who identifies as right-wing with the same brush. It's just that the vast majority of the people representing them online, tens of thousands of profiles and pages and sites and videos I must have seen by now, seem to think the way I'm describing. If that's not you, good, that's not you. But it's a lot of people, and they're dangerous. So I figured something had to be said. You won't hear me imply anything about intelligence here. The name of this video is The Right Doesn't Think, not It Can't Think. The right wing have certain biases in favor of authority and tradition that cloud its judgment. Authority fills us up with propaganda, which form the basis of our beliefs until we unlearn them. If we don't check ourselves, we learn to accept hierarchy, poverty, exclusion, cruelty, and brutality. We might even encourage them, thinking that they're in our interest, and learn to love oppression and violence. Loving your oppressors, or just being wrong, has nothing to do with intelligence. Everyone's wrong, everyone's biased, everyone's ignorant. 
But ignorance is no excuse to make or spread untrue claims that have major repercussions. Nor is it an, an excuse to retain the same beliefs all your life. Because everyone, or almost everyone, can think. You for sure. When I say the right doesn't think, I mean it accepts all the most important propaganda as true, and instead of questioning it, spends a huge amount of time enforcing it. The purpose of this series is not to debunk right-wing arguments. It's not a deep dive. I've already addressed basic propaganda beliefs that the right and many other people hold in my other videos. And there are plenty of better videos on other channels, some like Sean and Innuendo Studios that do great deep dives, some like the Surfs and Paradigm Shift that keep us up to date on the latest conservative attempt to say something outrageous enough for people who both agree and disagree with them to share what they say on every platform. They're, they're useful. Those channels are useful and important. But I just think not enough of them express the obvious conclusion that the right is too full of shit to be believed about anything. The purpose of this series is to show right-wingers have no arguments, no logic or principle, no consistent values except authority, and that as a result, right-wing claims and talking points shouldn't be taken seriously by anyone. I know, sounds dismissive, right? And it would be if I had no other reason than spite for saying it. But a disturbing amount of the supposed facts presented in right-wing online forums and news outlets and the non-sequitur conclusions they draw present the veneer of facts and logic, but are debunked somewhere else on the internet within hours. And they might sometimes tell the whole truth. But when you cry wolf so often, you're no longer guarding the sheep, but working for the wolves. But the people this nonsense targets don't know their facts have been debunked, or they ignore it, or they assume it's all lies, or just don't care because they only care about furthering their own cause. Not everyone is interested in listening and learning. If they learned, they'd have to question their beliefs, and beliefs based on faith, like belief in a country or uh, macroeconomics, fall apart, or at least evolve when exposed to rigorous questioning. But people don't like to do that. I get it. Beliefs form part of your identity. They situate you in a community. Most people don't want to lose those things, at least not until they're exposed to something better. And propaganda fills us with beliefs from the beginning of school, so if we don't let them evolve, they become so strongly held, we'll fight to defend them. Moreover, if we let propaganda give us our rules and beliefs about right and wrong, they're not usually based on substance like historical facts, but just words or symbols. Words and symbols are excellent tools for manipulating people. I'm mostly talking in this series about people I've talked to and observed online, which of course isn't a representative sample. But millions of people are in these online forums on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and the rest of them, and whether or not they would call themselves fascists or right-wing, they seem to be liking and sharing a hell of a lot of really right-wing stuff. Online communities can be quite insular. It's rare to hear anything in such circles from a different perspective unless it's to be mocked. You can tell the people liking and following these right-wing grifters don't do much in the way of fact-checking, or they write off all the fact-checkers as the left. If they looked it up, they might realize how often they're getting scammed. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me every time I go online because I don't question what I read, Shame on me. It's not to say there aren't liars, grifters, and ignorant takes on all sides of any political compass you can find, but on the right, it's consistent. But even the fact-checkers don't question the system. 
To understand the media, you need to understand how they fit into the wider workings of capitalism. But most people have no media analysis and no understanding of capitalism, and many conservatives will write off everything on media like CNN and MSNBC by calling them all left-wing. As if huge corporations could somehow be anti-capitalist. In fact, they might boycott all the biggest corporations for standard capitalist practices, but still support capitalism to the death, because they believe in the word capitalism, however bad actual capitalism gets. They can't see the system for what it is. Their, their word for bad is communism which is supposedly the opposite of capitalism. So even the most quintessentially capitalist institution is communist, or here left-wing, if it's bad. Likewise, if something gets labeled anti-American, it's bad. And you don't even have to explain what anti-American means, because everyone on the right automatically understands. America is everything that's good, so if it's anti-American, it must be against all good things that we say that we believe in. Mm. So I contend the right accepts the basic tenets of propaganda as given. You might not realize it though, because some try to adopt a subversive or rebellious posture. They're fighting back against the woke mob and the postmodern neo-Marxists who infect every institution in our country. But anyone can appear like a rebel by fighting against something they say is a larger and more powerful opponent. What they've done really is to declare that any radical new ideas, like believing black people's lives matter, or treating trans people as people, as now hegemonic the dominant ideas in the culture, forcing everyone to conform to them. And if right-wingers oppose them, they're seeing through them and exposing the propaganda. They're the brave white knights fighting the evil dragon that is the left. The right has always existed to fight against social change, which is why they consider everything to their left the enemy. It threatens to undermine the apparent order of the status quo. They might employ populist rhetoric attacking the government or the elite, when really they just want to replace them. They still support all the elements of power and the means of violence, they just think more violence needs to be used against more people. What I call the ruling class is not of one mind. They might feel a lot of class solidarity, but they have their own interests and they fund or own different media. Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, Bill Gates has MSNBC, sort of, and Rupert Murdoch has Fox. Those guys are all a bit different, so the biases of their media companies are a bit different. How about the far right? Who funds them and their media? Well. You could Google it like I did, but I'm putting a bunch of li links in the description anyway, so. For all their anti-elitist rhetoric, they take a lot of money from rich people. And why not? Lots of rich people find white supremacy a valuable tool for keeping people divided and maintaining their power. If we spend half our time working and half our time online fruitlessly squabbling with other people, we pose no threat to the ruling class whatsoever. We've distracted and disarmed ourselves. So I say, don't argue with right-wingers. Put things out for them to read or listen to if they're interested. If you get dragged into a conversation, think about whether it's really worth your time. Some people will deliberately try to drain your energy or scare you off the platform. People who like and share before they learn to question are ripe for propaganda. Every time I hear right-wingers talk, there's a threat to our very existence as a nation. And it turns out to be critical race theory or pronouns. I don't get how someone could exaggerate and make things up so much and continue to draw a following. 
but I guess it's because they exaggerate and make things up so much that they draw such a crowd. One thing I pointed out in my video on propaganda was the point of propaganda is not just to make people think a certain way, but to take action. The crowd can get all riled up at the stated perpetrators of the crime against society, the left, inevitably, and then do something about it. Feels good to get angry. It inspires action, like violence. But if you're angry at the wrong things, the consequences could be disastrous. I expect many of the people furiously sharing right-wing posts have parents or grandparents who've been drawn into mobs by lies about this black man assaulting this white woman and then went round to his place with torches. That's what happens when you unquestioningly accept emotional messages designed to appeal to your prejudices and let your anger take over your brain. So of course there are countless online and on TV grifters making millions by talking about how evil the left is, how hard it is for them to speak out against the evil left, how they're always being censored even though they have platforms with millions of viewers and subscribers and donors. These people aren't allowed to speak? Then why do we never stop hearing from them? They present themselves as attacking the status quo, which most people don't like, after all. But what they want is something even more reactionary, even more of the same. They don't want to give you freedom. They want to be the ones taking it away. The only way to get freedom in such a system is to fight against the system itself, not change the people at the top. But the right loves words, so it uses words like freedom to rise to the top. Look at Reagan. He used the rhetoric of freedom and small government to take power. But unless you were already rich, you didn't get any more freedom. But the right loves him to this day because he was so successful in using the right words and symbols. Reagan was also an example of how the right want to use systems of violence against vulnerable people and consider it righteous to do so because that's what the propaganda has taught them. Reagan used huge amounts of violence in Latin America, for example, and in the racialized ghettos of the U.S., all justified by fighting communism and drugs. Two more words that mean bad. Another word for good is my country. The right will use any amount of violence because someone told them it was for their country. Well, how can you fight for a country? In nearly every case, it means signing up to do the bidding of politicians. Everyone claims they don't trust politicians, but assume it's the height of virtue to follow their laws and fight their wars. You can hate Joe Biden, but go to war on his orders and say you're fighting for your country. The right tends to appeal to authority which itself tends to appeal to tradition. That leads to a very selective understanding of everything. People who say they love their countries usually don't love that much about them, actually. They usually haven't visited more than about 5% of the country, ignore parts of its history, and don't like whole groups of people who live in that country. In fact, the people angriest at the most things and people are often the most nationalistic. Because my country is perfect, so change is bad and requires a violent response. What about crime? Another classic right-wing excuse for violence. Is crime itself a problem? Hmm. Well, is it a problem that you speed when you drive? It's against the law. How about when you don't come to a full stop at a light? Is selling things at a garage sale without a permit or without reporting it on your taxes a problem? Do you ever gamble with your friends? 
Oh, oh, you're a criminal. <laughs> Crime is just anything illegal. And the government makes all kinds of things illegal that we don't necessarily consider immoral. But to a right-winger, the law is just something they can use to beat others into submission. You could ask what harm it would do if someone came into their country without papers signed by bureaucrats. And they'll usually just say, well, it's illegal, as if the law justified itself. Does that mean it would be okay to lock you in a cage indefinitely for speeding? Which is demonstrably far more dangerous than crossing a border. Or is it that the crimes you commit aren't really crimes, but the crimes brown people are targeted for are the real crimes? If so, you don't really believe in the law. But that's okay, actually, nobody does. Just don't hypocritically encourage using it against others. I don't care about upholding the law or fighting crime or punishing people. These are what the propaganda wants us to value. I care about reducing harm and suffering and removing barriers to people's freedom. Focusing on very vague notions like crime and drugs and saying they're all bad and require a whole system of police and prisons to deal with them leads to more harm and less freedom. But to the right, crime is a huge problem that requires the majority of local government budgets and even federal funding. But white supremacy is so small a problem that some on the right say there is no racism anymore. Or... It's just a few fringe reactionaries that might be a problem, but don't require much attention. Or, as the thinking seems to have gone recently, companies and football teams with racist logos have changed them. So you can't reasonably expect anything more. <laughs> but racism is still there, infecting every school, police station, courthouse, and prison, still killing people every day. If you don't care about it, if you downplay the dangers it poses, you might be indifferent to people's suffering. And that might be because you're a prisoner of propaganda. I hope this series helps you free yourself. Before I let you go, here are a few of the videos I didn't have time to make this week.